Let's take a look at the old Banbridge Junction Railway. It's an interesting little connector that used to run between Scarva and Banbridge. There it is. It took a bit of a detour. We'll get into the reasons why later. It didn't take, it didn't take a very direct route to Banbridge. And as you can see there, there used to be multiple ways you could get from anywhere to anywhere. So you're coming from Newry, you could take the route that's still open today via Port of Down, or you could have gone via Banbridge and then from Banbridge up to Lisburn and Newry. So let's look at this little, little uh, link that we no longer have. Four stations of interest here. Scarva, Lawrencetown, Lenaderg, and Banbridge, and apparently there was a little siding up here between Lenaderg and Banbridge. I'm not sure where it was exactly. Can't find much information about it. Scarva is the only station that's still open on this line, still in active use, and that's where we're going to start today. There it is, Scarva Station. And what do you notice about this house? Very similar in style to the station keeper's house in Castle Wellen. Very similar to the station keeper's house in, uh, I think it's Victoria Bridge up in Tyrone. So this must have been built by the Great Northern Railway. It looks like a private residence now. So it's good to see it's in good shape, someone maintaining it. And there's your station, still in active use on the main Belfast to Dublin line. And we're looking north here. We're looking south, actually. Uh, this is looking north. And north is where we're going to go on the overhead view. There's our station. There's our line. And there's the line moving up, making its way up to Port of Down. And here's the old line making its way through the fields towards Ban Bridge. And we'll look at all the crossover points here because there's not many of them. Not much visible evidence of a railway crossing over here. Did I go underneath this hill? Did I go through a tunnel or something? Doesn't seem to be much left of it. Another crossover point here. And again, not a whole lot left of it. There's uh, random stuff dumped on this side. And the other side has been converted to a little farmer's lane up to a shed. I imagine trains used to run up here. Through the fields we go, a few sheds have been built here on top of the tracks. The line disappears and reappears again here. A crossover point. This must have been great separated. This must have been a cutting that's been filled in. So this is a bridge that's been filled in underneath. See the gate? We've seen this gate before. That's a style of get that we see in other places on the old Great Northern Railway, so that must have been built by the railway company. Look at it rusting away, a little piece of history like that. And we keep following the tree line. This old railway just does leave behind quite a few clues as to where it used to go. There's another crossover point. There's the old the root of the old tracks. And there's a small house here. I don't see any evidence of grid separation. And I see a, a very small building that doesn't look like any modern house. So I wonder if that was a station keeper's cottage or a crossing keeper's cottage. I'm guessing that's what it was. And we're coming into Lawrencetown already. Here's Lawrencetown Station, it used to be in here. And we can look at it from above actually, because <clears throat> it was great separated. Someone's built a house down below then. Yeah, you're looking down here on what used to be Lawrencetown Station. And uh, the platforms actually are still visible too. There's the old platform. Curious about what this is. Is this a support for three big tanks or something? I wonder if it's railway related or is it something that came after. But there's the old platform where people used to wait for trains up to Banbridge or down to Dublin from here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, there's a goods shed there. I think that might be a farm building that was built lately, so it might not have been a goods shed for the station, but this apparently was the station building. Old Lawrence Town Station. 
and it's not in very good shape. So it's the same shape and size as the house that we saw down there in Scarva, same shape and size as the house that we saw in Castle Wellam and Victoria Bridge. So some buildings are better maintained than others. There's an old photo of Lawrence Town Station. So there's the old house. That's all covered in ivy at the minute, but uh, there's the old, the old station building. Doesn't seem to be there anymore. There's the platform. Still is there. Oops. So that was Lawrence Town Station, and the wiki page has a bit of information about it here. Opened 1853, closed 1955. Apart from that, not a whole lot of information about it. And then the line continued around here, and it turns to the south, traces the river, and I'm losing it a little bit here. Where did it go? Did it cross the river? Cross the river at this point. Cross the river here and go back over again. Back down here to Lena Derg Station. So this hedge here is roughly where the tracks would have gone, according to my map. The line went along down there towards Band Bridge. And this building apparently was the station building, which makes me wonder why it's so far away from the line. So is that the station building? According to Wikipedia, it is. Wikipedia says that is the former station building, photographed on the 18th of February 2007. I mean, it's definitely old enough to be the station building. Look at the shape of the windows and the uh, number of chimneys. It's quite old. So, I don't know, maybe it was the station. But I'm curious about why it was so far away from the tracks then. I wonder, was there a load of, like, was there like a big marshalling yard or something here? Or the goods buildings? Let me know if you know anything about that old station. And then apparently there was another station between here and Bound Bridge called Smith's Siding, but there's even less information about this. Opened 1903, closed 1937, didn't last very long, so not a whole lot left of it. So the line went down here. This Hunty Road, I believe, was built on top of the line as far as here, and then the line deviates from it, gets very close to the river. Oh, we're really getting into Band Bridge here at this point over the river. Uh, in fact, according to my historic map, the river goes under goes onto the old tracks for quite a bit. So I wonder, did the river move? You know how rivers move over time? Are there any geologists out there who can let me know? In the space of uh, 50, 70 years, can a river move that far after a railway has been closed? Curious about that. The line came down about here and into Banbridge Station, which was here, which is now the bus depot. There's your bus depot. Uh, there's the roof of the old engine shed. You can see it from here. Uh, let's go down the street just a little bit. Yeah, there's the old engine shed. And I have other photos of it as well. Oops. Yep, yeah, there's the engine shed, I think. Same building. Or is it? I'm not sure. This was definitely the engine shed, though. <clears throat> and uh, the Bound Bridge seemed to be a substantial station. Look at all these lines crisscrossing here. I think what we're looking at here is... I think that was the line to Scarva. That curling off to the right was the line to Lisburn. And there would have been a signal cabin here. Look at the old semaphore signals. Really nothing left of it now. So that was Banbridge Station. That was the Banbridge Junction Railway. And at this point, you might be wondering why did it take such a detour? Why did it not go in such a straight line? That doesn't. 
make a whole lot of sense to modern eyes, does it? Goes through these small settlements here. Well, these would have been more busy a hundred years ago <clears throat> because this was quite a busy industrial area. There would have been mills here. The mills would have initially taken their power from the river through a water wheel. That's why mills appeared by rivers. That's why you've got one down by the Tassa Viaduct. There's mills up here as well. Let's look at the Guildford Mill, actually. It's just right over here. This isn't directly related to the railway, but let's take a look at it anyway, because it's so cool to look at. There's Guildford. Where's Guildford Mill? There it is. It's an enormous, very impressive structure. Look at that. Look at the size of that one. Now, I hope this is being taken care of. It looks derelict here. This could be, you know, in a normal country, this would be developed into loft apartments by now because they're all the rage. You know, young people, people in their 20s, young professionals love to live in the middle of town in fancy apartments like this because there's plenty of room in these places to turn into big apartments. In fact, I, I live in a development similar to that myself. I live very next door to an old cannery, which has been converted into loft apartments. And they really do command a premium, so I don't know why developers don't do more of this. So that was the that was Guildford. So towns like Guildford and Lawrencetown and Lenaderg, they would have been big, decent sized industrial centres and moving your goods was a whole lot easier to do by rail. Road transport as we know it today didn't really exist. The modern lorry didn't exist. The train was the way to move your goods. So it made sense to run a railway through these places. So the, so the river brought the mills, then the mills brought the railway. That's the short answer to why the railway goes that way. Now in most of my videos I talk about why, how we could get these lines reopened. Would it be physically possible? Would it be physically possible to get those lines reopened? Yeah, it probably would, but I don't really know what you'd be gaining because it takes a bit of a circuitous route. You know, if you wanted to go from Scarva to Banbridge, you take the train that goes this meandering path, or you could take a more direct road. And I'm not sure if the train would be competitive with the driving time. Even if there is a traffic build up into Banbridge in the morning, driving, you might still come out ahead, probably would. And Ditto for points pass, you know, would you go this way to get to Banbridge or just take the direct road through Lock Brickland? You'd probably take the road. Ditto for Newry. Newry to Banbridge. Would you take the train and loop around, looping around here, or would you take the air one gel carriage? Probably take the gel carriage. So if we're going to get this line reopened, there might be some value in it actually. Getting a line reopened from Scarva to Banbridge or even points past to Banbridge. Here, here's uh, what I'm thinking. Say you reopened the line from Scarborough to Banbridge and you were to do it in a way that makes sense for modern commuters. Remember, we're not moving goods between mills anymore, uh, between the mill and the port. We're moving passengers from towns and cities, one place to another. That's what railways do nowadays. So what is the distance from, say, Scarva Station, I think, was about here, wasn't it? Yeah, there it is. And the branch went off about here, and then Banbridge Station was roughly about here. Was it here? Yeah. So that, roughly speaking, if you took a more direct route, is a distance of four and a half miles at the most, which is half the distance from Portadown to Arma, which is currently quite likely to get reopened. One of the most likely lines to get reopened, in my opinion. So this is a very short route here. So getting this reopened would not, getting this opened would not be impossible. And what that does is, you might think, well, why do you need a railway between Scarva and Bambridge? Scarva is a tiny village. That's correct. But you're also connecting Points Pass, Newry. So you'd be connecting Bambridge not just to Scarva, but also to Points Pass, to Newry, Dundalk, Draha to Dublin. You could take a train basically directly from Dublin to Banbridge eventually. You might have to change somewhere to get a connection, but it opens up the possibility of rail travel back into Banbridge again from the south. And then from the north, it would be possible to get the 
Lisburn to Banbridge line reopened, connect Banbridge both ways. So I've covered that on a separate video, reopening Lisburn, Hillsborough, Dromore, Banbridge. Definitely that line could be reopened. And if we did, then getting this little branch opened, uh, the connects Banbridge then to, uh, to the rest of the railway network from both ends. It also opens up the possibility of a second route from Belfast to Dublin. Instead of going via Porter Down, you could now go via Banbridge. Not impossible either. Something to think about. So this you know it's a short little route. It could be worth thinking about. It, the only banana skin I can think of is the topography. It's a little hilly there. You know, the original route, the cuttings are already in place. It's already been smoothed out and leveled for us. So you might be able to recycle maybe this much of the line, but the rest. You're going through some hilly country there. You might need to do some cutting and building of embankments, but not impossible. And another challenge would be, how do you get the line into Banbridge here? You need to, there's quite a bit of development here. This has all been heavily developed. You might be able to thread the needle and get the line in here somewhere. Not through here. These are little streets that have been there forever. Can't demolish that. Could you get the line out through here somehow? I don't know. It's a challenge. But not impossible, worth thinking about, worth considering.